Hindu holy men demand that India be declared a Hindu nation. On January 29th, a ga gathering of sadhus or holy people or kind of saints in Hinduism passed a resolution that called for the Indian government and the state government of U U Uttar Pradesh to declare India a quote unquote Hindu Rashtra or Hindu nation. The group also demanded the release of the recently arrested militant hate leaders Yati Narsinghanand Saraswati and Wasim Rizvi who uh, changed his name to something long that it was Tiagi. Narsing Anand was arrested earlier this year on multiple charges, including inciting violence specifically against Muslims. Along with him, Wasim Rizvi is on, also at the forefront of the extreme right-wing movements in places like Uttar Pradesh. Uh, Narendra Anand Giri, who organized the gathering of the sadhus, also implied the threat of a possible bombing if their demands are not met. The group plans to force the current administration to adopt their call to turn India into a Hindu state by influencing Hindus across the country to start writing and terming the country a Hindu Rashtra. So this was wild. There's so many different aspects of this story that I have to get into. I don't even know where to begin. So this was happening at a meeting um, it has a specific name, but it's like a meeting that happens at a festival and they apparently are like passing resolutions. And so I'll just take this one at a time. So first of all, they want to, India to be declared a, a Hindu Rashtra. So this partially um, is something they want to be done officially, but then they also have this plan where they are going to... <laughs> In, they, they're going to, you know, do this from the ground up, you know, whether the government officially does this, they are going to force the government to do this because they are going to influence Hindus or Indians to just, instead of writing India, they will just be automatically writing Hindu Rashtra or when referring to India, they will just say Hindu Rashtra. So you know, the idea is that the government will be forced to recognize India as a Hindu Rashtra just because that's how everyone talks about it, right? So that's one thing. Two, they are demanding the release from jail of these two um, people who are, were arrested for inciting uh, calls for genocide against Muslims uh, within the past three months. And they implied that they would, so they, that they would follow, um, Oh, wait, this is a cute comment from her story saying, look at Susanna pronouncing Narsinghanan's name like a total pro. She makes so much effort and he owes her a thank you. Oh, Aww. thanks. That's like <laughs> one of the only things they can say relatively correctly. But <laughs> this is absolutely crazy, Armin. So do you know who Bhagat Singh is? No. You're probably familiar with him. So if you're around Indian atheists, they will oftentimes tell you, read I am oh. an atheist, why I am an atheist by Bhagat Singh. Wait, is that the guy who died on March 23rd? Yes, I think so. Oh. He's often pictured wearing like a little slanty hat. He's young. He has like a little yes. mustache. So he was a revolutionary when India was fighting for its independence. Yes. He was a socialist. He was an atheist. And... Um, I keep he, tell, some people, some people keep some. Now I remember who this. I, I remember this picture. People keep telling, like sometimes we, we are told by some atheist Indians to celebrate him, and then we do, and then some other Indian atheists like, no, not this guy. He was a radical. He was like, violent. he was a like, radical. Oh. He okay, did so some we don't know what things that I okay, do not support guess, and killed the okay. wrong people. Not that there's like oh the right God. people, but like he didn't even do what he was trying to do, which was very violent. Correctly. Anyways, right. so then he was executed for his role in the revolution, and he's um, still very celebrated, even though he is um, controversial for those reasons. So um, at this meeting, um, the the someone said, let me uh, see who it was specifically. 
Um, oh yeah, so uh, Nehrendra Anand Giri, who is one of the con um, people who put on this meeting, um, then drew a bizarre parallel between the gathered sadhus and the revolutionary freedom fighter Bhagat Singh, who bombed the Central Legislative Assembly in Delhi in 20, uh, 1929 in protest against British law. Quote, if the government delays their release, meaning the release of um, uh, Tiagi and uh, uh, Nursing Anand, um, if the government del delays their release, there, there may be an incident like the bombing of the assembly for we are ready to become Bhagat Singh. Wow. And then when reminded that Bhagat Singh was an atheist. Wait, but that's our person, radical. You can't take our radicals. You're no, 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 wait. <laughs> when reminded that Bhagat Singh was an atheist and a socialist on the opposite side of the political spectrum from the Hindu Rastra advocates, Giri said, quote, I don't know anything other than that India was partitioned on the basis of religion and that we are already a Hindu Rastra. Okay. This is okay, crazy. So, That's insane. All right, so people, Bobo is pointing out that he started as a communist anarchist and then became less radical later. And also, um, Bengali Hindu is also saying he killed a police officer, but later he condemned violence. I mean... Yeah, he, he killed the wrong person, too. Okay, maybe like I don't know how much for like okay, I don't know how forgiveness works. Okay, maybe I need to go, I need to ask a Christian. Um, <laughs> but I don't think, con yeah, I mean, I'm not comfortable supporting somebody who killed a police officer, so maybe I'll, I'll okay, I don't know, but at the same time, people could change, but I don't know if like if you commit murder, like how much I don't know how, it, yeah, I don't know. All right, so I don't know what, whether or not we want to be supportive of this guy. Well, right. yeah, okay. I really yeah. oppose uh, violent radicalism. Um, yeah, it, but, but this, if somebody yeah, was... this is a whole different side, subject. Okay, okay, okay. okay. All right, um, so, uh, you highlighted. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so there's other stuff I want to get into in terms of go this on. story because it is crazy. So they also want the Modi government. F at the federal government and then Yogi Adinath at the state government and with our Pradesh to ban the use of the words minority and majority, which is crazy. I was, I said, Bobo sent this to me and I just replied like, so we're just banning adjectives now? We're just banning adjectives now. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> like, this is just descriptors of groups. Inherently, one has to be the majority. One is going to be the minority. God damn it. Um, then um, i just like to emphasize how radical this is. They basically started advocating for the approach of China. Wait, let me find. Whoa. Yeah, no, it gets crazy. Guys, let me find the exact quote. How big of a deal are these people? This is pretty prominent. These um, mm. are there was a lot of different groups that seemed to be part of this larger gathering, but um, one of them was the uh, Dharma Sansand, which is the groups that were responsible for these massive hate rallies that happened in December. So it's. Do you it's, think it's all so of this is going to lead? Like, I feel like like we're like. Okay, I I don't know. People see trends where trends don't exist. Okay. But based on my flawed light, like trend detector brain, right? Detecting brain. If I, I know I can't be relying on this, but I, I feel like something bad, really bad is about to happen. Do you know what I mean? Like all of these incitements, like, I feel like we, something huge. Again, I'm hoping that I'm wrong about this. But this is all, you know, I mean, if you look at history, which again, this is not a reliable data analysis, you know, way because, you know, things are different. Like just because things worked out in one way in history, it doesn't mean it's going to repeat itself. But we've, we've seen how, what this kind of language gets to, right? And I just feel, I just feel like if, when, if something really bad happens in India, like something really, really disastrous, a lot of us are going to be like, 
yeah, I guess like it's not surprising, you know what I mean? Like th- there was a lot of build up to this. I mean, at least we had like I mean, I know I can't rely my tr- you know our brain when it comes to seeing trends because we see trends where it doesn't exist, right? And history is not like a mathematical science that you could rely on just to be able to predict what's about to happen. But we had that genocide expert also warning like we had experts like telling me like this doesn't look good, right? So anyways, like I'm just saying like this is like this is really worrying. Like if if all this con- all this talk you know, some people were comparing it to like, I mean, we've seen this in Germany. Like, this is exactly the kind of language, the kind of things that built up to that. This is like 1930s Germany, and we know what happened after that. You know what I mean? But again, I'm not saying just because it happened. Like, I don't want to do the slippery slope fallacy. So I'm like giving you a lot of like, you know, this could be wrong. But again, it is, it is, it is worrying. Yeah. But go on. You want it's to definitely ask? worrying. I actually like worry about the safety of my muslim and ex-muslim friends in india i like try to check up on them and like ask like how are you feeling do you feel safe like because at the same time i'm also very aware that because um i so frequently get the worst news directly delivered straight to my inbox that my perspective on you know how big the threat of just any like muslim is in in their day-to-day life it, it might be um i might what I might think it is might actually be very disproportionate to what it actually is. And I know for a fact that it is very highly variable on your location. Um, but some of the other things that were talked about in this meeting, I have to talk about. So the sadhus or the saints also said that quote unquote, patriotic Muslims were part of the family and a decision to intensify their homecoming campaign would continue. So what they're referring to is conversion, quote unquote, back to Hinduism. So Gwaropsi, meaning homecoming. So they're saying, oh, well, the patriotic ones are the ones that will become Hindu, basically. Um, And then there was another quote saying, quote, Islamic Jihad is a big threat to humanity and the world. To crush it, the policy of China will have to be adopted, and it can be stopped by imposing sanctions as China has done. So in the quotes that I've seen, it's not entirely clear what he's referring to, but this sounds to me like they're referring to what's happening to the Uyghurs. People like, tell me if you think I'm out of pocket, but I don't know how else to interpret that. Um, and um, there was another crazy quote. You have a lot of live chat comments. Oh yeah. We also- yeah. They also basically said that conversion should be treated, meaning conversion from Hinduism to any other religion, because it's totally fine. It should be encouraged and intensified if it's converting back to Hinduism, but conversion should be considered as treason and wow. therefore punishable by death. Oh my God. What the hell? This is Sharia. Yes. yes. <laughs> This like the fact that they're comparing it to treason. Are they like are they reading hadith? Like this is like what the hell is happening? Um, like do they not see that they're becoming the the thing they hate the most? They're ex- they're acting exactly like that. Like what is wrong with you guys? Do you not see how? And then they get upset when we compare them to ISIS. Right, and they go burn down a former minister's home. Yeah, because they were crazy. compared to ISIS. And the, let's read some. Yeah, yeah, let's read the highlighted comments. Um, yep. <laughs> wait, Bubble's so funny. Saying Islam is a threat, so let's implode Sharia. Lovely. <laughs> Look, guys, like you don't understand, but like the language, it's not just like they're like advocating for violence. It's just that, like, if you're familiar with the way Islam talks about this, what they're saying is like, are you sure we're talking about Hindus? <laughs> like, I'm not saying like only Muslims are capable, like only Islam is capable of promoting violence. I'm just saying the way that they're talking about the justification for violence, it just sounds a lot like the way Islam does it. It's, you know, so it's it's not just the violence, it's just the, the branding of it. It seems like also like very similar. It just seems like they're copying, you know what I mean? I don't know. 
Anyways, mm-hmm. let's go to the star. So this was the final thing that I wanted to bring up. Bubble is saying they also wanted the government to declare Subesh Chandra Bose as India's first prime minister instead of the secular uh, Bawara Haral Nehru. Literal revisionist history. Yes. So they want to change who is considered the prime minister, the first prime minister Whoa. of India. Literally. And who they want to change it to is this guy who is celebrated for being an incredible fighter in India's fight for independence. But what is a major problem, uh, ethical problem with his legacy is that he openly supported the Axis powers. He worked very closely with them and he worked with Adolf and was fully aware of what was happening to the Jewish people. Like, and like wow. big fan of fascist Japan, like not a. This is why Mein Kampf is such a top seller in India. Um, it is a bestseller in India. In India. Yeah. What I think um, is so interesting, though, is that revisionist history or an open efforts for history revisionism is something that is so characteristic of fascists. Yes. You see it time yes. and time again across movies. You're right. You're right. Why do fascists always act like each other? It's so even if they're not talking to each other, they always sound like each other. Whether whether it's Islamic fascists, um, Hindu fascists, or white nationalists, you know, fascists, they don't communicate with each other, and they always end up acting exactly the same. Well, not exactly, but. It's yeah, so, no, so it's like just way too blatant similarities. It's like very, it seems to be part of the like personality traits or um, uh, temperament, like that just kind of always is very consistent. Atheists on YouTube is saying they want Hindu Rashtra, total Hindu nation, lol. They have to um, point if Pakistan can be Islamic Republic, then India can be Hindu Rashtra, but it's not a good idea. Yeah. It's not a good idea. I don't know why you would want to follow the model of Pakistan. Yeah, so Katie was confirming that I was correct about the date, but yeah, this one, yeah. Um, Rudresh is saying lots of Indians feel that India is behind China because of democracy and going the China way will make India a superpower. This is what Armin always talks about in terms of the short term games of authoritarianism versus the long haul of democracy. Democracy yeah. does take longer. Two, yeah. Bulbul is saying, I'm an upper caste Hindu and I don't feel safe in India because I speak out against Hindutva. Be, be safe. Take care of yourself. True. Um, random Buddhist guy is saying, it's an exaggeration. 1990s India was much more communal and 1930s esque Yahtzee Germany. And uh, let's not forget that 40% of Indians are below 20, a good chunk of them who are becoming less religious. I think this yeah. is a criticism towards you. Yeah, but that's why the the, the younger generation. In, that I always highlight that as a. Um, that's why I always say that I am very very optimistic about India's long term future. Okay, but these um, twenty year olds are going to take a time. It's going to take a while before they get old enough to replace all of these religious morons. Okay, so like, but I am, you know, against all the news that we keep hearing, the fact that the younger generation in India is a lot more progressive means that India's long-term future looks very bright. Again, I, I can't be sure about anything, but long India's long-term future looks very, very bright. I am very optimistic about that, right? But short-term looks, I'm very worried about the next couple of years. Again, I, I'm, I'm hoping that fear is like, and also when I compare when we compared something to Yahtzee Germany, okay, um, we're not saying it's going to be that bad, okay? Things could comparisons doesn't mean like it's comp- it's not equiv- equiv- equivocation, is that the word, right? You know, comparison means it. like yeah, equivocation, sorry. <laughs> uh comparisons doesn't mean like it's going to like we're not exaggerating if we see some similar trends um like for example when we compare the concentration camps in china when we compare that like oh yeah this is like going back to you know 
before the big H in Germany, you know, when we compare China's actions to Germany, right? Or when we compare Putin's actions right now to Adolf, we're not saying it was as extreme. And we're not suggesting that it's going to turn that bad, but there are similarities, right? So, so it's not an exaggeration unless we are saying it's going to turn into like, I don't know, 9 million people dying in camps when we didn't claim that right we didn't claim that that's how bad it's going to get okay but there are some similarities um but yeah i i do try to remind people that there are reasons there are many good reasons for hope for the long term of future of india but you have to admit short term things things will look dark short term things look look like they're getting worse um and also long term economically, I think the, the, it, it could, you know Ch India is going to become a, an economic power, and people's lives just becoming better makes them less religious, like on average, not always, right? So that's also it's not just that the young people are less less religious; it's also it's also the fact that the per capita the G the gdp per capita in india rising in the future means people are going to focus more on economic activity trade their own lives making their own lives better than like a new than creating a fucking hindu rashtra or whatever right so there's that um yeah so i think i think i think i do a good job in focusing on the good not just the bad the problem is that we do seem to be like focusing about too much on the bad because we are an atheist channel. And when the topic is religion, naturally things are going to be more bad news, right? Like if we were talking about everything India related, not just the religion side of it, then it would be a mix, a better mix of good news and bad news. But because of the nature of the channel being about the religion, Unfortunately, a lot of it is going to be bad news, but a lot of the good news from India is not religion related. So that's why we don't cover that, but we do look for it. <laughs> we do look for excuses to cover good news from India, right? Um, anyways, here. Kiki is saying, as always, what will happen in the Hindu Rashtra? Brahmins and other upper castes will take the mantle and others will eventually be relegated to the trash heap. In practice, that, that's something, I mean, there's, of course, that's one of the big concerns, you know, although a lot of these people, you know, try to front like they're for, you know, caste equality. Um, oh, so Bulbul is talking about um, Subesh Chandra uh, Bose saying he went and made a deal with Adolf to release Indian prisoners of war who were fighting for the British and then used those men to make his own army against the British. Yes. There's a lot of infamous photos, well, maybe not a lot, but there are infamous photos of him meeting with Adolf. What is Shaking hands. Um, Kiki is saying Hindutva shouldn't be called <laughs> ISIS. They should be called Hisis, Hindu state in the Indian subcontinent instead. I'm not going to lie. That's freaking genius. <laughs> Hisis <laughs> 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 Hindu state in the Indian subcontinent, like it's so good. It, it's perfect. Um, secular Sakai is saying, would a hypothetical theocratic India seek to annex Sri Lanka, Pakistan, or Nepal due to historical claims? I think they've been. Some of them have been open about that being their goal. So yeah. Oh well, just in the same way that ISIS will post these memes that shows you know like all the way from freaking Indonesia yeah. to the Maghreb, like in the black Rome. with the Sahaba, you know, like we're taking over the world. Like I've seen the same yeah. memes from Hindutva people where like well, know, I mean, half, of, I half mean, of Asia so, is suddenly orange saffron. Yeah, but I, they, they say, uh, they, they say, well, at least, at least we just want to take Pakistan, Bangladesh, and just like half of like, I don't know, the entire Indian subcontinent, Nepal, maybe Malaysia. Yeah, all the way down Malaysia, Southeast Asia. Indonesia, yeah, Indonesia, right? But they say, well, so, at least unlike the, unlike unlike ISIS, we don't want to take over the world. 
Like, so that's a good thing. Oh my <laughs> <They're> god. Like, <laughs> because ISIS wants to like take over every like they were like they want to put like the black flags over like the White House, right? They want to take the entire world. Like, like, hey, we just want to take over these all all these other sovereign independent countries and make them all a Hindu nation, but not the United States. So yay, us, like <laughs> Not Canada. We're not going to go for Canada. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, read this one. Um, random Buddhist guy is saying, true, a lot of these Hindutva schmucks are unemployed people who have no economic mobility. You know, that's what I think about when people are bombing me with the most like vitriolic and graphic threats you can think of. I was like, no one would do this if they had like the time. I don't have like, who, who has a job has the time for this kind of crap? Um, yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that I heard a lot of these people, like when they want to talk about, like I, I hear like the Hindus for talking to their recruits about why what they're doing is important, is that they bring up the idea, like I mean, how many Islamic countries are there? I know there's like more than 20 Arab countries. How many, I think like there's 40, how many Islamic countries? Um Okay, worldwide there are about thirty countries with Muslim population. Okay, okay, so, so I mean, I, there's I don't know even know how you define an Islamic country just because you have a Muslim population uh, doesn't necessarily mean that you're an Islamic country. But anyways, like that's, but their narrative is that they ask their like like the Hindus for like they have new recruits or people who are like going hiring people to like not hiring like motivating people to go and like fight love jihad or go like mess people up or stuff like that right so they tell them the reason why what they're doing is important they ask them how many islamic countries are there right and they people give an answer like i don't know 30 or 40 or whatever and they ask them how many christian countries are there right and then they give whatever answer they come up with right and then they go how many hindu countries are there and the answer is like just one right and they're like, this is why what we're doing is important, okay? Because, and this is why India needs to become a Hindu nation, right? Because, and Jewish people have Israel. Like, they, that's why also they feel like, oh, like, we're just being like Israel. Like, and this is why they feel, the, the ethno, the nationalists in India feel a lot of like, oh, we're just like Israel. Like, and they feel like Israel is the way to go because they, they relate to the ethno-nationalists in in Israel, right? Like, because Israel also has like one country that's supposed to be a Jewish country in the entire world, right? They're like, oh, Muslims and Christians, they have all these places where they could go and that that's their home and they, they have a sense of belonging and they feel safe. And it's a place where they could be protected against all this abuse against them, right? Like India is supposed to be a home against, for a, a place, like just like Israel is supposed to be a place where if things turn really bad against Jews around the world, they could go to Israel and Israel would provide them protection. They're like, India needs to be that for Hindus, right? All across the world, right? Um, so that, that's what that's the argument for why they need a Hindu nation, right? Which is, again, idiotic. And um, when they keep, this is the, the response, like the way I look at it, they're like, oh, there, we have this many Islamic countries and this many, I don't know, Christian countries. So we do need to defend, um, we do need to defend and having a hindu country a hindu nation it's kind of it's kind of like to me it sounds like well these countries get to be shitholes um why can't we also be a shithole that's what it sounds like to me like yeah like hey look we have these are islamic countries like yeah they shouldn't be islamic countries there should be a country you know they, we shouldn't have christian countries or islamic countries right we shouldn't have a jewish state Okay, we have we should have a state where Jews can feel safe in, but it shouldn't be a Jewish state, right? So they're like they're competing with the rest of these ethno nationalist or religious uh, theocracies into making their own countries a lot shittier. And they're like, yeah, yeah, can we have some of that shit here as well? Like, you shouldn't just because other people are ruining their country, you shouldn't try to outdo them, and you are outdoing most of them. I mean, I mean, Hindu nationalists in India are, are, are doing a lot of Islamic countries. The only Islamic countries they're not that doing are Saudi Arabia, Iran, Pakistan, um, maybe the Aceh part of Indonesia, Bangladesh, but 
all the other Islamic countries, the Hindutva is outdoing them in, in making their of... country in terms oh. of fucking their own country, right? Like, like turning it into a shithole. Like who out? Like yeah, like their Tunisia is better. Tunisia, Malaysia, with all the shit is happening there, is better than India. Uh, Tunisia is better. Than, like yeah, a lot of Islamic countries are now better than India. So yeah, congratulations. Like imagine how sh how fucked do you have to be for you to be able to do war worse to your country than Islam is. Like how? Yeah, that's a, quite an accomplishment. Katie is also anyway. pointing out that that propaganda that, oh, well, how many Hindu countries, majority countries are there? And, you know, that's the whole reason why it needs to be protected. Saying that's not even true. There are other countries with a Hindu majority like Nepal and Mauritius. But they don't they don't they want Nepal to be part of this Hindu nation? Like, aren't they going to be invade? Like, isn't there a plan to invade Nepal eventually? <laughs> Like, I, I thought that was their plan. Like, don't they see that as part of the Hindu nation that they are like claiming to be one thing? So I don't know if they see that as separate. So I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe it's not that they would invade or take over. It's that, you know, they would just all just really lovingly be. come back. Come back and, home. Come, come back home. home to Mother India. <laughs> come back into the bosom. My yeah. long last child. You've been gone for too long. Uh, Kiki is saying no plans to invade Nepal yet, <laughs> but they sure supporting members of the former monarch. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Katie saying, I mean, I mean, there are maps of Hindu Rashtra stretching from mid Europe to the South Asia. What is that? South Asian, Southeast, Southeast Asia. Asia. Right. Mid Europe? No. Mid Europe? Come on, I don't. Well, because a lot so. of Hindutva people, they argue that actually the whole world was once Hindu, or that all religions have their origin in Hinduism. So you're like, oh, well, they don't say that it's going to take over the whole world. I'm like, some actually do say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I can't. But how many? Um, wait, like, is okay. Okay, wow, amazing. Mid Europe would that cover like the Middle East as well? Then, if they're going all the way from India, like, wait, do you do they want to like maybe take they're over, following like... like Romani migration? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, that's weird. Wait, <laughs> I'm performing Guarwapsi Nation Edition. <laughs> okay, Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder Armin Abadi blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below. 